Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today's video, as you can see from the title, is a very exciting one. Some of you will know if you've watched some of my videos before that I've spoken briefly about this and I've been meaning to make the video for a long time. So many of you have been messaging me every week being like, when's this story coming out? It's here, hello. Firstly, if you're new here, hi, my name's Joel. I make videos every single week about all sorts of things to do with my life, really. Sorry, I've just seen, I'm wearing Tommy Hilfiger. I got a message yesterday being like, you need to stop wearing Tommy because it's what poor people wear. And I'm like, well, I guess I'm poor because I love Tommy, sorry. Anyway, so what we're gonna be talking about today is when I turned down Emmerdale, which is really sad. And I, I've got my laptop here because I've got the emails up from my agent and this was in 2013. So, oh my gosh, this was the year I started Joel and Leah. A few months after this, I started YouTube. Anyway, let me set the scene. Right now, currently, I don't really do much acting. Acting has always been the thing that I started with. I was obsessed with acting when I was younger. I was did loads of acting classes, youth theatre, everything. Did national youth theatre. Then I went to RADA and did a year there. Acting has always been it for me. I've also been acting since I was 15. I've had an agent ever since I was about 14 and I've been going to auditions for things and booking a few bits of work ever since I was a teenager. My life now is very different. I think some people stumble across my videos and just they're like oh you're a YouTuber you just started making YouTube videos and that's how you got into it. No, I didn't. I started in acting and then YouTube has sort of taken over. At this stage, I think I was getting quite a lot of auditions for various different things. I was basically, I remember at one point my agent told me that I was the flavor of the month. Like every casting director wanted to see me for something, which I don't know why that was happening. I think because at this time I was very early 20s, late teens, very early 20s, and I wasn't competing with anyone who'd been to drama school. I was getting auditions for amazing things and recalls and then booking some jobs. And then when I hit about 22, 23, everything kind of stopped. And I think it's because at that age, there are some people coming out of drama school. They've done three years, they've had the professional training, they've got the top agents, and suddenly I was in competition with them. And compared to them, I didn't have that full three years intensive training. So I think that's why it sort of tailed off. Anyway, this was in like my days where I was the flavor of the month. I got an audition for Emmerdale. I don't know if I'm breaking any NDAs by talking about this, but it's been eight years since it's passed and this character I think is still on Emmerdale or, uh, until fairly recently anyway. So I remember I was at home and it was summer. I was at home from university and I got a call from my agent to be like, oh my goodness, we've got you a casting for Emmerdale. It's for a lead role. It would be, I think it was about a two years contract. It says you must be available from the beginning of October 2013 for a minimum commitment of two years. And this was my dream, guys. And it still kind of is. I'd love to be in a soap. To have that commitment, that long-term thing of like, wow, I've got an acting job for two years is amazing. I remember just being like, oh my gosh, I've got an audition for a two year role on Emmerdale. And if you don't know, Emmerdale is like a huge soap here in the UK. There are three big, or four big soaps. You've got EastEnders, Coronation Street, Emmerdale, and Hollyoaks. Hollyoaks I've also auditioned for about five or six times, but that's another story. I was so, so excited. I remember being over the moon. And then I read the script and I found out that it was a gay character. And you're probably thinking, Joel, what's the problem with that? Like, you're gay, so what's the issue? Well, I knew that, but no one else knew that. And I, don't, I probably hadn't come to terms with my own sexuality. And I was just like, oh my goodness, like, I can't play a gay role. What will my parents think? So the breakdown of the character, one of the paragraphs says, Connor is gay, out, and it's not a problem, except maybe to his older brother, Josh. Da -da 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 -da. So they go on, and I remember seeing that and my heart sinking. I was like, this is the perfect audition why has he got to be gay? This is just not what I want. I was so insecure in my own sexuality and so fearful of it and been brought up to think that it was so wrong that I was like, I can't do this. I remember telling my parents about, not about me, but about the role and they were like, you need to turn it down. Like, I don't think you should be doing it. Anyway, I was like, no, you know what? I'm going to go to the audition because what are the chances of me getting this role? right? It's a two year role on Emmerdale. Like what are the chances? Like it's a good experience. I'm just going to go. And my parents are like, okay, cool. So I learned the script. It required a, a general Northern accent and 
<laughs> I'm as southern as you can be, so I had to like learn a northern accent and put on a northern accent, which I won't do for you now. I went to ITV Studios, it was when they were in the ITV Tower on South Bank, and I'd always wanted to go in that building. And I went there, and they took me to the 14th floor, I remember it very clearly, and I sat in the waiting room with some really good looking guys, I was just like, oh my gosh, I don't stand a chance next to you lot. The casting directors, there was two of them, they called me into the room, and what was really weird about this specific audition as well is that they didn't have a camera, they only had a webcam. And so they're like, sorry, I know this is really weird, but we're going to put this laptop in front of you and just try and ignore your own face while you're acting. Um, we just need to film you, but the only camera we've got is a webcam. And on a, if you're an actor, you'll know how off-putting that is. Like, I don't want to be staring at my own face because then I'm going to be overthinking, going, is that what I look like? Oh, oh, I pulled a weird face then, what am I doing? You don't want to be doing that. You don't want to be in your head when you're acting. So anyway, it was a really tough audition. These casting directors were both Northern as well. So I was like, oh gosh, I'm going to butcher their accent. But I did it and I think I did it quite well. And I just remember leaving that audition being like, I'm going to get this role. Like, and that never happens to me. I never have, and it wasn't a confident thing of going, yeah, I'm going to get this. It was like this feeling. I was like, you're going to get this role. Like, this is it, this is your big break, this is your role. And I was just like, no, it can't be because this is, I'm just supposed to be coming for the experience, not for like getting the role because it's a gay role and I can't possibly play a gay role because I, I just can't have anyone find out that I'm gay, blah, blah, blah. A few days later, I got an email from my agent saying, got some fabby news for you this Friday afternoon because you've been asked to recall for Emmerdale. And this time I had to go to ITV up in Leeds and Leeds is where Emmerdale is filmed. So I had to go to the actual studios and I, they called me as well to confirm and they were like, so this is gonna be in front of the producers. There's three of you that they've whittled it down to. So I now am one of three going in front of the producers. They were like, you've got a really great shot. They really liked you. And I remember being like, wow, they liked my Northern accent. That's good. But I was just like, oh my gosh. Like, I can't do this. I also, I, like, I don't want to drag my mum and dad. Maybe their, their attitudes would be different now. At the time, they were like, I think you need to turn it down. Like, there will be other roles. And I just remember being so torn because I was like, but I really want it. Like, to be in Emmerdale for two years is like a dream come true. And deep down, I didn't care that it was a gay role because I knew I was gay. But I just felt this pressure from not just my parents. I remember telling my friends from church about it and them being like, I think you should turn it down. And I was just like, as if I'm in this position, like why can't this character just not be gay? Or why can't my friends and family just support me and be like, wow, that's incredible, go for it. Anyway, so I sent an email to my agent and I'm, I haven't read these emails since and my agent was not happy. She was very angry and I haven't read these emails since and I'm gonna read them to you now. <sighs> Bearing in mind for my agent as well, this was a big deal because they would obviously have commission from my fee for Emmerdale for two years. I imagine my fee for Emmerdale would probably be like 80k a year or something like that. I don't know for sure, um, but I think soap stars get paid quite a lot. Obviously more if you've been in it for a longer time, but it probably would have been anywhere above 50k per year and my agent would be taking 20% commission on that. Obviously as well, this could lead to other opportunities, so they were very disappointed. So I said, hello, I've been thinking about Emmerdale recall and wanted to let you know that I've decided not to attend. You might recall that when I signed the contract with you last year, I stated very clearly that I, I'm very firm. I stated very clearly that I wasn't willing to perform nude or audition for non-heterosexual roles. So basically, when you sign with an agent, I don't know if this is still practiced today because it's been a long time since I had an agent. They, you tick a preference form where you're like, are you willing to perform nude, yes or no, or semi-nude? Are you willing to perform gay roles, yes or no? Are you willing to do this, that and the other? So obviously at the time I had ticked no, so they were aware that I didn't want to be considered for gay roles at this time. Um, however, this time I decided to go to the audition as I know it's a good experience and felt I didn't want to turn down such a big audition. Having tried the first audition, and I obviously did better than I thought I did, it really only confirmed to me that I'm not at all comfortable playing a gay role and therefore I have decided that I won't be pursuing Emmerdale any further. I'm sorry if this messes you around. I know that you work very hard on my behalf and I'm very grateful, but my feelings on playing non-heterosexual roles haven't changed. <laughs> this isn't me. Like, do you know what I mean? That... I did have help writing this, but at the time it, it was me writing this, but I can just see through it and I'm like, this isn't me. I know that you're writing this email, like, crying inside, being like, I 
really want to do this. <sighs> anyway, the email, I think they then tried to call me and I didn't pick up because I was too scared. And my agent replied and said, thanks for your email. I must say I'm disappointed by this news. I would have thought that most actors would relish the chance to perform roles that are far away from their own lifestyle and casting. That is surely the point of acting. It's a humbling situation as an actor to be able to try and demonstrate a character's struggles and complexities, whether you agree with them or not. In Shakespearean times, as I'm sure you know, all performers were men and any love scene between a man and a woman would be played out by two men. I'm unsure if you might be concerned with the public's perception of a gay character, but I think we can both agree that Brokeback Mountain certainly, uh, certainly didn't do Jake Gyllenhaal or Heath Ledger any harm. I also would like you to consider that this is Emmerdale. It's not an independent film where there may be sex scenes. This would certainly be a family-oriented representation of a homosexual character. I cannot force you to audition for anything, and I certainly wouldn't want a client to go to a recall if they knew they would turn the job down if they were offered it, but I do think that not attending this recall would be a mistake. If you could just let me know your thoughts or read this as soon as possible, I would be very grateful. I feel so uncomfortable reading this. <sighs> So then I replied saying, thanks for getting back to me. I totally agree with many of the points you raised, but it simply comes down to the fact that this isn't something I feel settled about doing. It has little to do with the public's perception and more to do with be this being a very personal slash family issue. This was the reason for me stating from the outset by ticking the box on the contract form that I didn't want to be put forward for any non-heterosexual roles. I've tried to represent agency name in a positive light by going to the first audition with an open mind and by making a good first impression which I think I did because I got a recall I've used this process to review my thoughts on the issue rather than just say no but having been to the audition and thought about the part I feel same I feel the same about it now as I did when I signed with you I feel I have to re represent myself and my beliefs in an honest matter in an honest manner I'm sorry to disappoint I know you might not understand my reasoning but is well considered and will not change and I don't have any more email chain regarding this. So, and I can't remember what happened. I don't know. I didn't get dropped by my agent. I thought at the time, I was like, oh my gosh, they're going to drop me. And they didn't drop me. I just hate reading that. That is horrible to read because as I said, it doesn't sound like me. And it's, I know deep down it wasn't me, but I do have to take responsibility for my own actions. I just did decide not to go for it. And the thing is, I knew that I was going to get it. I 100% believe, I don't know if any of you are the same where you have these feelings. I joke around that I have psychic abilities and I, I don't believe that it's being psychic but I do think I have very good intuition. It's happened on a few occasions, ask my friends. Lucy has a really good example of when I just foresaw something that was going to happen. Leah sees it all the time, ask any of my friends, I have very good intuition and about an acting role I've never had it before where I was like I'm going to get this. I know if I go to this recall in Leeds with the producers I'm going to book the role and I'm going to have to deal with this. So I nipped it in the bud as soon as possible but Oh my gosh, it's one of my biggest regrets. I wish that I had gotten the role, that I had gone for it and I had done it. That said, YouTube would not have happened without it because a few months later, I started Joel and Leah on my main channel and that is now successful. And like, it's been my full-time job for three years now. So <sighs> it's hard because I, I try not to live with any regrets and I know that I wouldn't be right here where I am now, but I can't help but think, where would I be if I'd accepted it? Firstly, I might still be on Emmerdale all these years later. I might be a series regular. I might have loved it and decided to stay there. I might have had other opportunities like Strictly Come Dancing or I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here, these reality shows that celebrities go on, which I'd love to do. It may have led to other acting roles in films or TV shows. <coughs> Guys, I can't remember where I got to. Sorry, my mum called and we just had a long chat. It's been about an hour. <laughs> I don't like to live my life with regrets. So I don't think about this often, but it does occur to me sometimes where I'm like, wow, my life could be very different and maybe in a bad way. Maybe I would have done the role for two years and my career would have stopped then. And then I'd be back to working the jobs that I was doing before I was doing YouTube, like back working as an usher at a theater or back doing promo work. Whereas YouTube maybe is even more stable than that. So who knows? We don't know, but um, either way, casting directors, if you're watching, Faye and Sophie, if you still work in casting at Emmerdale, and you're watching this, I'm sorry. I wish I could do it again. And if you ever have a casting for another character coming up, whether he's gay or straight or whatever, I'm your guy. 
I need to practice the northern accent again, but I think I've still got it. So yeah, basically guys, don't be me, don't be stupid, don't cave to, you know, the pressures of your background or your family or your friends or your religion or anything. Um, just do what feels right for you. Because if I'd done that, I'd have been in Emmerdale for two years. Never mind. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe. I post videos every single week. And please give it a like. Press the like button. That really helps me out. And yeah, let me know if there's any other story times you want to know about. I am going to talk a little bit about... At this stage, I don't know if it's out on my channel yet. But I'm also going to chat about my first big break when I... Again... I should call this my series of near misses, when I nearly was a Disney child star, when I was about 14 or something, and it didn't quite happen. Due to no fault of my own, it could, it's a near miss. This is my near miss series, so, uh, so stay tuned for that, and I'll see you next time. Bye.